Hey everybody, my name is Mark. I am a uh, field service technician out of the North Wales, Pennsylvania branch. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some quality cut issues and some common things that we see in the field and how to correct some of those issues. A um, couple things that we're going to need if you guys aren't aware or don't have a flat plate. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Prism gauges, they come in handy. We have two different height of cut gauges. So we have one, it's actually gonna set our roller height, which is the effective height of cut that we're gonna work with. The other one that we have here, this is gonna be for setting our brushes and FTCs. Okay, so if you don't have those things, First thing before we do anything else, you're gonna to wanna to get your hands on those products. All right, so a couple quick things. Um, anytime that we're uh, talking about any sort of problem in the field, some of the first things we're gonna look at are um, consistent setup between machines. So if you're running multiple machines, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all those machines have same number of reels, same bed knives, same roller setups. Um, we're also gonna to have to take into consideration that uh, different holes, different greens, different fairways, everything's going to have a little bit different uh, turf condition. You might have different operators doing different areas of the course. All those things are going to play a little bit of a factor in what we're going to see in terms of our cut quality. All right, so all cutting units, we want to make sure that they all have the same number of blades on the reels, whether it be 7, 11, 14, um, or 5 if you're running the uh, QA7s. We want to make sure that we have the same bed knife, same roller position, and we want to make sure that all of the adjustments that we're going to make to these units are done on the bench. We're not going to make these adjustments in the field. Uh, it's going to be really hard to, to make uh, accurate and consistent adjustments if the machine is actually out on the course. Um, so for anybody that hasn't, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the setup and then we'll go into individual problems that we see. So squaring a front roller, um, we have our reel and we have our bed knife. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna draw that a little bit bigger. Make that easier to see. Uh, let's get nice and big there, okay. So we have our reel and then down here, I'm gonna fatten that up for the camera. We have our bed knife, okay. So our flat plate, when we go to set that, Call out our flat plate and there's this little piece here that's good the reel is actually going to sit on top of that so that's going to be this little bar if you can see that right there the reel is going to sit on top of that the bed knife is going to bump up against the back of it now with our our unit set up here the rear roller is going to hang off the back that's not going to touch anything the front roller is going to be on the plate. So our goal of doing this right now is that we're going to actually square the real cutting unit itself to the front roller. Okay, so this is something we have to do right off the bat when we set up a unit. Um, if that is not correct, that can create some problems right there. So this is definitely one of the first things we're going to do on the bench. Um, on the QA5 units, there is a cam adjuster there. You're gonna loosen that bolt and turn that adjuster and that's how we're gonna get this to square up with here. Okay, so I'm not gonna to go too in depth with this. This is just stuff that we're gonna look at um, before you guys make a service call to us or something. Just, you know, some little things that you can check out. All right, so after that, the other thing we're gonna uh, move to is uh, we're gonna actually check the reel to bed knife adjustment. Now when we do the reel to bed knife adjustment, different manufacturers will tell you different things. Typically what we're looking for, so I have some Bernhard cut paper here. Typically what we're gonna look for is that when we pass the reel across the bed knife, I have two pieces of paper here. Some guys will set it tight enough where it's gonna cut one. Okay, it's probably a little bit too tight. What we're actually looking for clearance-wise here 
is two pieces of paper together. And what's going to happen is as that reel comes around past the bed knife, kind of cheat it here just to show you, it's going to cut one, and if you can see that, and bend one. So one piece of paper should pass, one piece of paper should cut. So it's kind of like if you're using a feeler gauge, um, you know, and you have a, a pass or fail there, um, this is going to be, you know, our pass, and then that's going to be too tight. Okay, so that's about where our reel should be set. Um, so we, we've squared, we've adjusted the reel to bed knife to make sure that we have a good clip there. Um, if you don't have that, that's clearly that's going to be a problem right there. We're going to have to address either the reel or the bed knife to get that cut. Past that, we're going to adjust the height. I think probably anybody watching this video is pretty good with doing that. Um, you can use any type of gauge that you want. This is a, this happens to be a digital gauge, um, with a nice little magnet on it. Makes it real easy when it's up on the lift. Um, so you'll adjust the height of cut to whatever you're going to adjust it to, and we'll talk about um, some different factors there in terms of what reel, bed knife, and roller setups that you're going to have to go with. Um, if you are setting up, so we'll, we'll talk quickly with the um, FTC and GTCs. So these guys are going to sit behind that front roller. The position of this is going to be set initially at height of cut. So we're going to start there and then we can work more aggressive and over time we can bring that down based on what we're seeing in the turf, uh, whether we want it to be more aggressive or not. If it is too aggressive, that's going to cause problems. If it's not aggressive enough, it's it's not going to provide any sort of function to you at all. So, um, and all of these will adjust out of the way too. So if you want to compare an area that you're using the GTC versus not using it, you can simply they're little twist adjusters. You just pop them. They're up. It's out of the way. You can do a couple passes. Come back. Put them on. See how it affects your cut. Um, something else that's actually usually uh, pretty common to be overlooked is basic maintenance of the traction unit. Um, this can affect how the reels are performed, uh, performing. Um, so even things such as tire pressure, um, a unit with the incorrect tire pressure is going to bounce more or less as it goes down the course, going to ride a little higher or lower from one side to the other, could provide some traction issues. Um, which will ultimately make the machine move a little bit more, give you a little quality cut issue there as well. Um, upkeeper replacement of reels and roller bearings. So in the end of each of these rollers, um, there's going to be a set of bearings. They do wear out. As that wears out, that means that from the point that this mounts on, this roller is now going to shuffle up and down as it moves. So it's going to create a lot of play in the cutting unit, which we definitely don't want. Um, any type of hopping, skipping, we're going to get to that a little bit later and some of the problems that that causes. Same thing can be true with the reel itself. Um, I do when I rebuild these, these bearings in here, they're serviceable. They definitely need to be checked. Um, if you, at any point you can grab the reel and either pull up on it or wiggle it um, side to sides, okay. There is a spring in the end of it. It's meant to do that. Um, but in terms of the reel moving up or down, what's going to happen is when you have the unit flipped up or even on end and you're setting your clip or whatever you, you know, you're doing at the time, when you go to set that unit down, the reel is actually going to drop tighter to the bed knife and that's going to create some more problems we'll talk about. Um, we want to make sure that we have the proper reel and bed knife selection. So when we talk about that, um, on the QA5 reels, we have 7s, 11s, or 14s. Typically, if you're going over a half inch, you're going to want to use the 7 blade reel, and then 11 or 14s for under a half inch. All right. Um, coming back to the bed knife then, in terms of the bed knife selection. So, if you use a bed knife that is uh, too thick, say you're trying to use a, a fairway knife or something, you're trying to cut, you know, uh, eighth of an inch or so, what's going to happen is this bed knife is actually going to be too fat. Can you see that all right? Yeah. 
um, this bed knife is going to be too fat. And what's going to happen is if we go to set this at different angles, let's say we got to come up to kind of get our clip where we want on that reel. The back end of this knife can actually start to, to drag on the turf right there at the, the, uh, the bed bar. Um, alternatively, it can, you know, can always do the opposite of that too. I'm going to say that's our turf. And we're going to say that, you know, we're trying to adjust down this way and that front angle too fat or something along those lines. Either one of those conditions will cause a bed knife that's actually making contact with the turf because we're trying to uh, approach a height of cut that's too low for that setup. All right, so continue with uh, height of cut here. Um, bench height of cut versus actual. Uh, a lot of times I tell customers it's kind of like dyno tuning your car. It's going to show you how much power it makes on a dyno. Uh, when you actually take it out and drive it, conditions, other things are going to affect it. So typically whatever you have on the bench may not 100% match what you see in the turf. Uh, and that's going to be based on different turf conditions, uh, operation conditions in the machine. Um, so speed that you're traveling, all sorts of things are going to play into that. So when we do bench set something, um, say you bench set at 125, you go out in the field, you notice it cuts higher or lower or whatever you're getting out of it. You're going to want to make an adjustment to that, um, based on what you're seeing, if you need to come up or down, you know, whatever that is, um, different pieces of equipment, whether it be. Yeah, greens mowers, fairway mowers, different brand of equipment. Um, they're all going to be a little bit different. So you do have to pay attention to what you're doing on the bench and see actually what is different in the field based on those conditions. And that may change over the course of a year or two as your turf conditions change. Uh, so we can talk a little bit about grooved rollers. So one thing to look for um, when you're running groove rollers versus a smooth roller. So here's our smooth roller. So we have an even pressure point all the way across this. Okay. So when we move into, it's going to be my crudely drawn. Looks more like a wily here, but um, so what's going to happen is we can see this is going to sit lower when we go into a grooved roller so we may get an effective lower height of cut by moving to a more aggressive front roller so that's something we may want to consider um, bed knife and thickness angle we talked about um, and the potential for those to drag uh, one other thing too and I, and I do see this sometimes when I go out is that on these rear rollers, if we're even the front roller, if you're not equipped with any type of scraper or a power brush on the back. Okay. So let's draw our little, let's get our little power brush on the back here. Um, build up on this roller as we get clumps of grass, wet grass and stuff starts to build up on this roller. It's obviously it's going to spin. So it's going to come up on the bottom at some point. It's going to change the unit. So the unit's going to do this a little bit. Uh, that can effectively change our height of cut, particularly if it's doing it on both rollers at the same time. And unfortunately, it's probably not going to do it very evenly, so you might see it on one unit more than another unit. Um, so keeping those clean, uh, either if you're using an accessory that does it, like the scrapers or the power brushes, uh, or if you're just on top of the maintenance and you make sure that the rollers are clean every time that machine comes back in. Okay, Marcelling. All right. So... Most of you are probably familiar with frequency of clip, and basically what we're talking about is as the machine travels, how often is that reel coming across the bed knife, and that's our clip. So what happens um, sometimes, and this usually most will occur um, if the unit is traveling too fast and the reel speed doesn't keep up, and the reel speed can slow down if the unit's you know, uh, overcome, we're cutting too tall of grass or something along those lines. But basically what we're going to see is a little bit of a ripple effect. And it's because as, as that reel, there's our reel on our bed knife again, as that reel comes past the bed knife, it makes a little clip at that point. But let's draw some blades in here. It's not going to make another clip until it gets 
a little bit further, it's moved down and then it's come around again and it's clipped again. And what we end up with is little peaks and we end up kind of with grass that'll look like that over time. So as this gets wider and that frequency of clip gets greater, you're gonna see longer valleys and it'll be more noticeable. So, um, and probably one of the best things for that as far as correcting it is make sure that our real speed is all the way up uh, and make sure that we're operating the machine in transport or uh, drive mode when we're cutting at an appropriate speed for the frequency of clip that we're, we're targeting for. Um, oh, can increase the number of uh, blades per reel too would be another way to do that. You gotta figure for every revolution that we have of this reel, the more blades on it, the more clips we're gonna get per revolution. So that's another way to, to kind of compensate for that. All right, uh, roller overlap, which is something that we can talk about. So let's say we have, um, on these clear enough yep we're good all right so these will be our front cutting units and these will be our rear cutting units not to scale okay so what we're gonna see is as we operate the machine we're gonna drive that way is that there's gonna be sections these rollers overlap. So if we look here to the outside, the grass over here is only going to be—it's going to be rolled twice. The grass here is going to be rolled four times by these back cutting units that overlap. So um, some things that we can do to to change that if we don't want to see those patterns. Those patterns are too pronounced. Um, one is definitely to look at it after uh, the sun's come up. Uh, we get a better aftercut appearance after it's had a chance to dry out a little bit too um, and stand back up. Uh, but if at that point we're still seeing a lot of these lines more than we want to, then we're talking about switching rollers. So we can either switch to different combinations of grooved, um, semi-grooved that have solid end caps on them. Um, you know, we can kind of figure out what appearance we're trying to go for and then go for a roller application that works for that. Scalping. So if we're having units that scalp, um, big one on this that we see is, is front roller setting. So on the QA5 units, um, the front roller bracket has a series of numbers on it and the bracket looks we'll kind of draw it we'll we'll draw it like that for a second here um what's going to happen is if this is in the improper position all right and i have a little cheat book here but this information is is available to you guys through various tech manuals um if you can see that just generally speaking we have a set of um you know, whether or not we have FTCs, GTCs on there, uh, and then what front roller setting we want to go with, um, and then what that recommended range is. So what's going to happen with these front rollers is, let me draw my roller on there. So firstly, if, if we're running any type of FTC or GTC, our, um, our reel is going to be back here. That's going to sit in here. If we're not running this, okay, so we're not running any of these groomers here, this bracket wants to be oriented facing the other direction. Um, and the reason that I say that is that uh, I've gone out on courses where they have, you know, some of them have occasional quick undulation or such, and what will happen is the distance you know, if you think about like a Jeep, for example, it's got a very short wheelbase, makes it easy to, to go over things and nothing comes up in the space between those rollers or those wheels. Um, if we have this in the front position and we have a greater distance between the, the rear roller and the front roller, we have 
more distance to welcome any type of, of deviation, undulation, anything to come up in between the space of those two rollers and kind of, you know, especially if you're coming over the crest on something, very easy way to end up clipping or digging into your turf. All right, so we'll go back to this guy here. So what's gonna happen, make sure we still got a little bit of room here. We'll put our rear roller there. Good, still in, still in view. What's going to happen is when this is not in the correct position, whether it's too high or too low, um, we're going to have to adjust the angle of this, this rear roller here to suit to match that. And what's going to happen is whether this has to come up higher or down lower to get us at that height we want, um, you know, for example, coming down too far this way to get our height, so we're extending the back far, that's going to put us in a position where the bed knife is going to be more angled like this. We're going to get potential scalping because we're going to start to have contact on the back of the bed bar here. Same thing if we went the other direction. Let me draw it here for a second. And this is going to be our rear roller here. Now we're coming the opposite direction. So we're going this way um, because this is not in the right position and that's going to cause the front of the bed knife to potentially create, create some contact with the ground, cause some scalping. All right. Um, tearing or browning. So tearing or browning, uh, this is gonna be caused a lot of times, so like we were talking about the, let's bring out my little paper example here. So, when the grass is clipped, all right, and we got our, our clean pass there again, what's going to happen is if the, if the grass is not actually cut because we have dull bed knife, dull reels, what's going to happen is it's, it's just going to whack it. And when it whacks it, it's either going to tear it off and we're going to get, instead of, let's, let's say that's our, our perfect cut, we're going to get grass that gets kind of pushed over and it's going to tear along the edge of that. It's going to kill the tip of that grass, and we're going to get some browning out of it. So that's one way we get it. Uh, incorrect bed knife angles. So part of our purpose of our bed knife here is to stand the grass up at whatever desired angle we have at that front face of the bed knife to give us our cut across there. So if that's wrong, say it's you know too steep, the grass is laid too far forward, the grass is too erect, it's dragging backwards. Any of those conditions are gonna cause a bad cut there that can cause some browning. Um, frequency of clip too fast. So if you're actually driving too slow, uh, reels are still spinning at a very high speed and potentially hit the same blade of grass multiple times. That's gonna cause some browning. Uh, grain, so if we're starting to see grain pattern, that's turf being inconsistently um, uh, or sorry, too consistently mowed by either mowing in the same direction all the time, um, pushed flat by uh, solid rollers, solid heavy rollers. Um, something you can do for that, change the groove rollers, add some conditioners, verticut more frequently, uh, or um, change your mow direction. Uneven height of cut, we see that with thatch buildup, um, height of cut not being consistent across multiple units. Uh, different bed knife attitudes, so that's going to come from the individual reels on each cutting unit um, being more or less worn than other ones. Uh, excessive speed during cut that can cause units to float. Um, if it's intermittent, the recommendation for that is that you're going to vary speed um, or changing cut directions, probably one of the easier ones to do. Um, let's see. So step cut, so draw a quick picture of this one. So step cut meaning that when you cut your grass, if we're kind of going this way and looking down, that we're getting something kind of like that in our cut. Um, that's typically gonna be caused by um, variation of height across the same cutting unit. So not the, you know, the rear or the front, but one cutting unit. Um, 
Worn rollers and roller bearings can do that. Um, like I was saying before, if that bearing is worn, it's, it's going to hop. It's going to allow one side of the unit to, to, to dig or drop as we're running. Um, and that could cause that, that drop off on one end or the other. Um, coned reel. The reel is coned and you're trying to adjust your bed knife. One end's going to have to come up more than the other. You're going to have two slightly different cut angles as you're approaching that grass to cut it. Um, if you do see this, um, this is definitely a reset on the bench type scenario. Stragglers, probably pretty common. Um, that's dull reels, dull knives. Um, trying to cut too much grass at once. Um, if you're going you know, a long time between your cuts, that's uh, potentially a uh, cause of stragglers. Um, what else we got here? Scalping. Um, so just to touch on that again, I had that on here twice, I guess, because I've seen that before. Um, again, uh, effective height of cut lower than bench cut. So we need to compare that with our prism gauge to what we have our actual cut versus what we're seeing on the bench. Um, incorrect bed knife again, uh, or uneven wear on uh, reels and rollers. So those would be the things I would check on those. Cutting unit hop is uh, mowing too fast, so the unit's bouncing, so that can be a tire flotation issue too if your tire pressures aren't set correctly. Um, any type of buildup on front or rear rollers. Uh, also, if you have bushings, lift arms, yokes, or anything else that's worn out that has excessive amounts of play in it and allows the units to flop around, um, you'll see that hop and you'll see some skips in your cut. Clipping dispersal, so too much clipping. We're looking at, um, you know, cutting cutting too tall on wet grass. Uh, we could be looking at um, adjusting. So on the on the QA5 units, there's a, a cutting unit, it's like a hood, I guess the best way to call it. Um, that's going to determine some of your ejection that you're having uh, into, this is my crudely drawn basket. Um, so we can adjust this up or down. There's a little adjuster. It's right about here, little bolt there on the hood. Um, and that's going to allow you to open or close to allow more or less airflow to throw those clippings up into the, into the, uh, collector. Uh, streaks, uh, streaks, most common things with streaks are going to be either nicks or gouges in the bed knife, um, damaged spots on the reel. Um, if you've been running excessive contact or wear, if you've recently um, top dressed, you know, anything that's going to cause um, uh, uneven surface across the bed knife or uneven point at which the reel is crossing that bed knife. Um, streaks, if you're getting those from a mower standpoint, as far as a traction unit, um, turning radius too tight, you're not getting enough overlap of your front units and your, um, oop, have to call that customer back. <laughs> Um, get a, uh, a too tight if you're mowing on slopes, any of those things where the front and rear units are not going to overlap properly, um, that's going to leave you some little streaks there. I have occasionally seen where um, lift arms or other components are damaged and the units are actually skewed out a little bit and then you can end up with like a little pinstripe between the fronts and the rears. So tried to keep that kind of quick, uh, ran through some notes here real fast, showed you some stuff that I saw in the field. Uh, hopefully this stuff helps you. These are a couple things that you guys can check uh, before you make a service call to us. Uh, maybe save you some time, save you some money. Um, might be something we could help you with over the phone. Um, if not, feel free to call us and have a happy new year.